everybody. How's it going, everyone? You want to start with this one? I don't know what to say. We just saw the only covenant was meh. It um it felt like it tried to be an alien movie. It had the alien. No, it was not a fucking alien movie. <laughs> like I said, it tried. Yeah, it was not. I said it tried, but it was just uh, meh. Like, like it had the ingredients, but it just. It got, it got caught up in Ridley Scott philosophical bullshit. Uh, yeah, remember that? When, like Prometheus was guilty of, but I feel like not to this. This one felt like it was stroking yeah. a stick a little too hard. Because at least uh, Prometheus, like there were enough questions that it kept me interested. This was just kind of, eh. If Prometheus, if it, like it was that one joke I love from I think it was the Cinema Snobs review of the Prometheus. So it's like. You really can call this movie, dude, don't touch that. If you can call Prometheus that, you should call this movie, dude, stop fucking touching things. <laughs> because again, everything bad that happens in movies because somebody has to touch something. <laughs> <laughs> and then you die. Sucks to be you. Um... <sighs> yeah. Touch computer, you die. You touch an egg, you die. You touch your naked wife in the shower, you die. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what a weird time to get busy at that period of point. Yeah. Uh, All our friends are, are dead. dead. <laughs> Let's bang. <laughs> uh, fuck. Okay, so I'm trying to collect my thoughts on this because this is just kind of weird. Uh, not in a fun weird, just in a... Except for one moment, which we'll yeah, talk like, about oh later. Oh yeah, because I was like, <laughs> that was the one we were just being complete immature jerks. <laughs> no, like, it was clear the undertones were there, but God, it was so hard not to burst out into laughter <laughs> in the theater. It's like, yeah. well, that part of Alien's there! <laughs> yeah, I guess. I was, oh, God. I think, like... There are parts, scenes where I was like, okay, that's legitimately a pretty freaky scene. Um, where it's, it's in the trailer, so I don't really give much away when, like, the ch like the backburster, I guess you call it now, kind of yeah. pops up for the first time. That was a legitimately well done scene. Uh, and that was legitimately really, really creepy until you see the monster. Uh, and that kind of comes into a large point. I know I've harped on this several times in the past, but you know what? In the Alien franchise in particular, this is a relevant discussion. Practical versus CGI effects. Now, I honest, I love the first Alien movie. I honestly like it better than Aliens. Uh, for me, they're both awesome for their own respective rights. Yeah, that's they're, fair. They're, that's fair. I mean, like, they're so, very different films. Yeah, one's a horror, one's an action year. Mm -hmm. This felt like it was trying this, to be both. Yeah, that's, I noticed that too. And that, I think it's when it got to the action points. That's when I kind of click, remember, like, this is not an Alien movie. Yeah. Like, this is really not an alien movie. Uh, the, the woman just becomes an action hero out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> with no build-up or legion. Boom. Suddenly she's an action hero. I was like, what? Uh, okay. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, other spoiler. Um, so I remember I pointed out that, uh, was it James Franco was in this movie? Yeah. He so dies found immediately. Out, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, they were not wasting time on that. Hey, if James Franco's that movie, I'd kill him off immediately, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is for why him, Smash. <laughs> and the interview. Other two. And that other comedy I'm sure you hated that I hated. Um, I never stopped. Sausage I never stopped. Party? Was he in Sausage Party? I think he was. I feel, yeah, he was. I think he, he was the uh, stoner. He was the fat stoner guy. I was just Franco. Yeah. Wow, I suppressed so much of that movie from my brain. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. I've noticed this very quickly. It, again, is the fact that because CGI technology, technology in general, back in the '80s, wasn't very good, the first <clears throat> film had to use restraint. Yeah. And because, like, if you saw the man in the suit in full frame for a good chunk of time, it would look stupid. Yeah. So, and the same goes for, like, uh, it is another example I could think of for this. Where, like, if you did it in any other way, it would look stupid. Or Jaws. Uh, or Jaws, too. Yeah, Jaws is another example of this. But because they, CGI technology isn't what it is now, they had to use restraint. They had to cleverly frame their shots. They had to pick exactly when, where, and how to show the monster. But now CGI removes that restraint, and directors like Ridley Scott in particular give into the temptation to show it as much as possible in the worst lighting possible, 
So not only is it very, it's not as convincing as it thinks it is. So not only is the fakeness in full view, it's confident enough to keep showing you how fake it looks. Yeah. And how much you can clearly tell it's not there. Yeah. And that's, that's, I honestly, that's what took me out of the movie every single time I was watching this. Yeah, because I was just like, I, I agree. It's like, I mean, granted, the actual alien looked better than those little things, but even then, it's like, still, it's like, oh, no. But again, it's, it's like, it's not there. I, yeah. I know it's not there. And I'm not saying, like, the aliens ever look spectacular when they're fully moving or anything like that, but again, at least there's something to physically interact with. Yeah. And then, again, I mean, you... Hell, that's a little surprise, bitch, moment from the first movie still gets me every fucking time. Yeah, and, like, again, like, the the, the scenes in the first, or first movie are legitimately creepy. Like, the face huggers still scare the shit out of me. In the first two movies. Those fucking spider things? Yeah. <laughs> I hate those fucker things. This one, not, not even a little intimidating. Because, again, I know it's not there. And they, the animators can't... The CGI animators can't capture the same movement that the live... The, uh, yeah. The live the, well, the practical effects did, so it's not as creepy. Well, here's but, an interesting thing about that. Like, I remember um, I saw it was a thing about Ray Harryhausen. Mm -hmm. Had, like, Phil Tippett, and I can never remember the other guy. I don't know. A.K.A. you had one job, you had to watch over supervised dinosaurs. Oh, yeah, that there. guy, yeah. Uh -huh. um, one of the things they talked about was the idea of unnatural movement. Yeah, that and that, creates, that's the thing, too. Uh, how that creates a nightmarish effect, and that's what... That's what made the face, uh, the face arc so creepy yeah. in the first movie. Yeah, and it's interesting seeing how it's like, yeah, like when you think about it, it's like, yeah, that, that's why I fucking hate spiders. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna hug my face and put eggs in my stomach. <laughs> uh, and then again, it... it it invites overindulgence, uh, which Ridley Scott in particular has been guilty of more and more as his career has gone forward. Because uh, in this one, you have the attempted creeps and action of alien aliens mixed in with the philosophical BS of Prometheus, and they don't mesh well. Uh, because David from the first movie, who was probably the most interesting character in the Prometheus movie, is back here, but they amp him up to such a ridiculously cartoonish degree that I had a hard time taking it seriously for the majority of the film, even yeah. though I wanted to, because uh, I liked David in Prometheus. I thought it was pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, I thought he had a great character. You know, he had great character up in there. The idea of like a robot trying to be human. But you know, this like this one, he's just he's just one step away from a Bond villain. Like he's yeah. just really ridiculous, and that's the point where it kind of lost me. Like again, for like. The backburster scene gave me a little bit of hope because I'm like, okay, that was a Jimmy very well done scene, very reminiscent of the original Alien. Yeah. And then this immediately followed up by a weird splooge monster uh, that just goes all feral cat on the nearest part. You know what it reminded me of? And this is going to be a horrible comparison. <laughs> it reminded me of a mixture of the second one's going to be worse than the first one. The Pygmies from Mummy 2. And the weird space monkey from Lost in Space. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> Nothing should be reminded me of that j weird pancake Jar Jar Binks abomination from Lost in Space. <laughs> that thing was more terrifying, and that was all CGI. Um... <laughs> But that's what it's reminding of the way it moves and shit like that. And I was kind of thinking, like, this isn't scary. It's trying to be scary. And the actors are, God bless them, are giving them their best. Uh, Danny McBride, I'll give credit. I don't like him, but he's pretty good here. Yeah. Um, they're giving it their best, but again, it's like working against, a, a, it's yeah. working against air. You have nothing to bounce off of. And yeah, and it's, and here's the thing else kind of jarred me is that when they had this philo philosophical stuff, they didn't have Really, it didn't any, tie in anything. Yeah, it didn't tie in. Well, it, it, there was I mean, very, I guess it did, like, very thin threads, and like it didn't help that the characters didn't really have any major development except for, oh, this is my significant other, they're dead. Yeah, and they did this for freaking everyone. I mean, Danny McBride, I think, was the only one that I felt really got some more development because yeah. at least we knew him before. Yeah, like spoiler, his wife dies. Uh, but like the main character of the movie, his her husband dies right off the bat, so we have yeah. no context of who she was before this happened. Yeah, except for that apparently she was um like she did some rock, mountain climbing. I guess that's about it. It's like she okay. married James Franco. That tells you how damaged she is. <laughs> uh, sorry to dig into James Franco there, um, uh, but. Yeah, and it's just one of those things, I just, I was just thoroughly unimpressed. I didn't want, I don't want to say I hated this movie, because, like, mm. there are parts I want to like more, it's yeah. just, I'm just thoroughly 
it's just underwhelming. Yeah, underwhelmed. That's a good, uh, that's, yeah, that's how I say how I feel about it. And again, it was around that time when the alien finally does show up. And again, the chest burst looks nothing like the original film. Yeah, because at the point I was like, that wasn't a chest burster. That was just a tiny alien. <laughs> yeah, and that's like, just, and oh, yeah. then they like, do look the, at me, I'm a puppet. And then they do the fucking Jesus metaphor, which is like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, it comes down to like a mixture of uh, okay, that was kind of creepy too. That's really stupid. Um, and I'm surprised not more critics are calling out for that because yeah. there are stuff in the movie that's like that's really fucking dumb. Uh, like for a perfect specimen, the Aliens movie is really dumb, like yeah. really dumb for like. And again, it it I get it. It's a newborn and all that, but like the the ones in the first two Alien movies, even like the fourth one. Learn faster than this thing fucking did. Yep. Uh, the fourth one even makes a point to make point out how quickly they learn. Yep. Um, and that's the fourth one. Yeah, and they, get their ass, <laughs> and they get their asses kicked pretty easily, too. Yeah, like, it's it's like, like they the, kill, they these kill. aliens are pussies. <laughs> it's like... Fuck. Yeah, it's like... Okay, more spoilers. One gets crushed in a crane, the other one just gets ejected into space. Yeah, and, and it's like, they, they barely have front. like 10 seconds, 10 minutes of screen time collectively. Yeah. Uh, so again, it's like, this is barely, this is barely an alien movie, the part yeah. that has aliens in it is not reflective of any of the actual yeah. alien movies. In a good way. Yeah. Uh, well, again, like, Alien 4 was more of an alien film than this movie was. <laughs> Which is sad, uh, even with that weird human skull alien thing that was at the end of four. Did you ever see four? Yep, yeah. I've seen both. I've seen the director's cut of it too, <laughs> which helped. But uh. keep in mind that was the same director that made Catwoman, so uh -huh. that was the same director that made Catwoman. Which is sad because that guy actually made a very interesting film. I oh, for the life of me, I can't remember. Catwoman. No, it was, a, it was like this weird <laughs> French film. It was like uh, you know, he's a French something director. Of, so something sense. of lost children. Uh, I know. I think I'm. And had Ron about. Perlman in there too. Oh, I love Ron Perlman. He makes yeah. everything better. Uh, oh wait, he was. I just remember he was yeah. in Alien Resurrection. Also, he was the best part about Alien Resurrection. <laughs> also, also the guy in the wheelchair. I think. I think they kind of were like tag team, weren't they? No, maybe. Oh, maybe eventually they were. Yeah, exactly. originally he was the. He was on somebody's back for a good chunk there. For a while, I remember it was the guy with the dreadlocks. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, but anywho. So, it's just one of those things, like, I'm watching this film, and it's like, I want to like this, and I want to like where they're going with this, but it's, same, it's so far up its own ass uh, with what it's trying to do and what it's trying to say. It just it just kills it, and, and I'm just, I feel nothing. Yeah. Like, uh, again, the, only, the, the best scene in the movie is the part where the first guy dies and the thing bursts out of his back. That's the best scene in the movie. Um, because, one... At least there were some practical effects there. Yeah. And two, like, the actors' reactions felt genuine. And so, yeah. like, it, that scene worked. Like, it was great panic of just, like, a bunch of things just colliding together. The idea of, like, one being powerless, another one being powerless, everyone being powerless, everyone else being powerless to get back in time. And then things, just, and then as soon as the monster started appearing, it just got really cartoonish. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of what killed it. Again, David from the last film shows up in a fucking Assassin's Creed cloak. With very long hair for some reason. Uh, and it's like, I'm not going to ask how we got the hair growth, because that's... Whatever, it makes yeah. just as much sense as anything else. Oh yeah, and then they find the answer with, answer with the alien, really, like where it comes from and all that stuff. And it has the twist at the end, and you can see from a mile away. Yeah. Like, didn't fool me for like a second. Yep. Uh, I don't know who this... Like, you really have to be trying not to look for this, not to see this twist coming. Um, so a bit of spoiler, I guess. But again, if you watch this scene, you can figure out like five seconds. I knew it yeah. immediately. It was like, Same oh, here. yeah, like and there, no, yeah, I'm not, I'm not stupid. <laughs> uh, where basically there's another android on Walter. Well, yeah, I was gonna get that. And the Covenant named Walter, and he. <laughs> okay, we can talk about that scene now. Holy <laughs> fuck! Uh, that was the best moment in the movie. Yeah. Uh, Holy not, shit! Not intentionally, because there's a. He's also playing Michael Fassbender, doing like a slightly different <laughs> accent. Yeah, he's trying try to do an American accent. And you remind. You know what he reminded me of? You remind me of like. God, it was like that. I think it was like American Keith or American Dave in that 
Yu-Gi-Oh! abridged online series. He talked the exact same way. Man, that's an obscure reference. Ugh. Yeah, because I'm an American. <laughs> and it just, that's all I could hear. I, I don't, I never watched that, so I can't speak yeah. on that. But I just know that there's a part where, um, as soon as, like, David sees Walter, he goes, Welcome, brother, and all that bullshit. And, it and then it, le and it leads into where Walter wanders into his room, picks up, like, a record, what do they call those scenes? Recorders? Yeah. Uh, and he, and then he kind of looks at it, and then the other Michael, David, shows up behind him and goes, uh, Whistle and I will come. And that's where I started giggling, like, go Google for me, and it only got worse from there. <laughs> because he's like, I, like, do you play? He's like, I don't know how. Nonsense, I will show you. And that, uh, and that was like, my god, this... That was like... Blow, I will place my fingers on the holes. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like let no, it's like let me handle the fingering. Oh, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that was the line. It was like just blow, let me do the fingering, and then and then you and I just turned and looked at each other and started just giggling like immature schoolgirls. <laughs> Because it's played fairly straight too. Like, it wasn't. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh god! And then there's yeah, the other part which is like is like put a little bit of pressure on the hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put a little pressure on the hose. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a course in you after all. <laughs> Do, 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 and I'm just like, do, 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 do. oh my god. Because, I mean, the fact is, Alien was kind of born on the idea of homosexual face rape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but just male, just male face rape in general. Mm, but yeah. obviously that meant there was a little bit of that kind of homoerotic undertone. This went beyond undertone. <laughs> Whistle and I will come. <laughs> or also the part where he starts, where he kisses himself. Oh, yeah. Like, that's when we lean over to you and go, What narcissism means to me by Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Uh, and just like. Yeah, it turns oh. So it turns out David makes the original Chestbursters aliens. Um, which, again, that's one thing, like, I'm not really sure how I feel that that question now has an answer. Wait, which one? Uh, the, where, like, where the face huggers came from. Well, technically, there was that other one that came from Elizabeth Shaw when she gave birth to it. Yeah, but like this is like the actual, actual yeah. face person. Uh, so basically, it was just a bunch of hybrid. Pretty much. It was just yeah. bunch, a whole bunch of Michael Fassbender dicking around uh, with genetics and claiming, I, I created the perfect specimen. No, you did not. <laughs> you created the dumbest aliens I've ever seen in one of these fucking movies. Uh, and that's including Alien 3. Granted, I never saw that one by her stories. So. Oh, that fucking movie. Yeah. But. Watch the. You know what said. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut so, you off there. It's yeah. like. You know what said? Alien vs. Predator Requiem is a more faithful alien movie than this one. That was a dumb movie, but I at least had fun with it. Yeah, I did too. But, uh, like, at least I feel like that one was a little more true to aliens, as dumb as it was. This one, as soon as it gets to the part where Danny McBride picks him up on like in a garbage truck, basically, or cargo lift, whatever the hell he caught, and then uh, takes him back up, and then it turns into just this insanely dumb action sequence where what's what's the main <coughs> character is like fighting the alien on a tilting cargo yeah. plant platform, and then it yeah. gets killed by a crane. Like this, that was one. Of, that's where I kind of that's why it lost me completely. Yeah. I was like, this is really dumb. Yeah. Like no matter what you start with, this is really dumb, and it has no place here. This is not an alien movie. And Grant, I'm I'm saying that knowing full well that the ending of the second one has a giant robot versus an alien queen. <laughs> but damn, was that a badass moment? Well, I was like, the alien movies have always done best when they're in tight enclosed spaces. That's what made the first one work. Made the second one work. Like the bit more open space you got, the more silly it looks. Yep. And the less excuse you have for actually being able to overtake you. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. He's like, bang, dead. Okay, there you go. There's your, there's your perfect specimen, Fastbender. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, he just uh, goes out like a punk. Yep. Uh, I, I'm hating this movie now more than like I talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I kind of had the same effect of Prometheus when I saw that one. When I, when I first saw it, I was like, eh, that was okay. Then I actually sat down, I thought about it. 
and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, that sucked. <laughs> I'm having the same feeling with this one. Like, this one just... I feel like Ridley Scott doesn't remember what made the original films good. He's he's lost a lot of... He... I don't know where he went wrong. Robin Hood, probably. That was a little bit before that. Probably. I don't know. I don't... I don't that was the, like, the... That was the most recent of the oldest... Like, the last of the newer Ridley Scott movies I can remember on the top of my yeah. head. Gladiator. That's when it started to go downhill. Yeah. That was still a good movie, though. <laughs> yeah, but everything after that, he was trying to repeat the Gladiator formula. Like with Exodus. <laughs> I forgot he did <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I would have loved it if nine-year-old tantruming God... Visited Michael Fassbender in this movie. <laughs> and got, I want you to create the perfect specimen, but it will kill me. Just do it! <laughs> but don't you think there's a better way? Just create a dildo monster! Does it have to have a penis on the head? I have spoken! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, I also forgot he did do The Martian, which is pretty damn good. I was like, yeah. But that uh, that's like a, his, that had a sense of fucking humor. Yeah, that was like his last good movie. Mm. I'd say that was his last really damn good movie. Yeah. His, or not his last, but his only really damn good movie in a long time. I don't know. I don't know, man. It just, yeah. just... If you want to watch an alien movie, watch the originals. Or watch yeah. Guardians 2. <laughs> like, what was... Uh... What was one fucking thing? <laughs> I saw like a text conversation online today that uh, apparently some uh, someone's someone boyfriend took uh, this girlfriend to go see uh, Alien, but she thought it was Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> so she was like, "I was waiting for the cute fox to show up the entire time, and it never did. What the hell? It's on the poster." <laughs> and he goes, "You saw?" It's like, "Wait, what?" I'm really confused. Like, yeah, it was Guardians, and there was no Guardians and stuff like that. I was like. You saw Alien! How'd you confuse that with Guardian? <laughs> and, she's like, and she's like, I was waiting for the cute fox to save him at the end the entire time. I don't know why it never happened. <laughs> and the guy was like, wait, what? I just, uh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what else there is to say. I mean, it's just... It's just a bland movie. We're probably going to get another one of these because of the dumb cliffhanger ending. Um, yeah. With the obvious twist that... Because he... Yeah, I think Scott said he wanted to do a couple more or something like Didn't that. Didn't he say like he can pump out like some insane amount of them, like 23 or something like that, if he wanted to? Probably. Ugh. I think it was a... What was a hashtag I saw online? It's like, save Ridley from himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just this is not an alien movie and if you're a fan of the original franchise you're like I'd be surprised if you like this and if you do maybe see something in I don't but I didn't get anything out of this uh, I just I was just very underwhelmed and, disapp underwhelmed and disappointed yeah so it's like I don't know how it got the reviews it got but it just <sighs> neither do I um Full enough philosophical like, nonsense in there. You can fool the critics. Uh, apparently, I mean, work for Sausage Party. <laughs> uh, yeah. What is up with the religion in James Franco movies getting good reviews? This is the end. <laughs> Sausage Party and Alien Covenant. <laughs> I guess you want to loose the tide in there. Uh, well, I guess you can all consider Rise of the Planets of the Apes, too, if you really want to go there. Yeah. Uh, with the Jesus metaphors. Um... Yeah. I had a joke here and I lost it, but it's okay. Uh, Either way, it's just watch the whistle else. into come. <laughs> I'll do the finger. At least we had. <laughs> at least we had that. Uh, all right, so let's dive into trailers real quick. All right, so we got first one we got is for American Assassin, which both of us were making fun of until Michael Keaton showed up. <laughs> then both of us were just like. I know. All right, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Keaton playing a badass, and Michael Keaton has just aged like fine wine. He just gets better the longer he goes. After he hit that low point with the other guys. 
Was he in the other guy? Yeah, he was the police captain. I didn't see that movie. Oh, God. It's a pretty good... It's actually pretty good. That's one of the few Feral McKay movies I actually enjoy. Mm. Let me phrase that. One of the couple. Yeah. That may be the only one, actually. <laughs> then why is it bad for Michael Caine's career, then? No, as in he looked... Oh, okay. And, like, because I, I remember, like, my dad and I were in the theater. <laughs> I was like, hey, Dad. It's Michael Keaton. He just looked for two seconds and went... <laughs> yeah, I love me some Michael Keaton, man. Uh. No, the fact that he didn't recognize me, just like, he's like, oh my god, what happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> I love modern day Michael Keaton. Are you kidding? Modern day Michael Keaton is amazing. Yeah. No, he is. I'm just saying, in terms of how he aged. No, I, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're just saying. It's just like, it took me a while, because it took me a while, it was like, oh my god, that's that was Batman. Yeah, and I was like, he's at that age now where he really doesn't have to do any big movies. Yeah. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, well now he's kind of reverse aging. Yeah, kinda, he, yeah. He's looking better now. I mean, like, it's, I mean, if you look for, like, from the old movies, like, Jack Frost movies he's doing now, like, uh, oh, man. Birdman and uh, hopefully Spider-Man: Homecoming. Hopefully Spider-Man. I I think he's gonna be good in that at the oh, very spotlight. least. Spotlight. Spotlight. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Spotlight. Uh, the founder. He's on a fucking roll. Yep. Uh, up. Started pulling off of Josh Brolin. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember his terrible career. Ugh. Hey, Josh Brolin's amazing. You shut the hell up. No, <laughs> he was. No, I was like Goonies was great, and then he was in basically nothing but crap. Until he hit uh, No Country for Old Men. Mm, and that kind of put him back on. Yeah. Now he's Thanos. Let's we'll see how that goes. Uh, now he's what? Now he's Thanos. Let's we'll yeah. see how that goes. Uh, didn't he just get cast in something DC? Uh, and Tom Hardy did. No, wait. No. Uh, no. I, it, no. Uh, he's Frankenstein. No. Never mind. I can't remember. Because we heard him narrating something, but... Well, that was a commercial. That right, count. that's what it was. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, let's get on to trailers. Uh, oh, Jonah Hex doesn't count. <laughs> you know, talking about bad Josh Brolin movies. Uh, yeah, then we got uh, War of the Planet of the Apes. I am really excited for that movie. Because one, you have Andy Serkis, who is an amazing actor. Fighting Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Goddamn motherfucking sweet ass Woody Harrelson. Fuck Yeah. And not only that, you can tell he's got his Woody Harrelson personality right along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> just again, just like in that one scene he has in that same trailer, it's like where it's like we're in a war. You, you're good, but stop taking it so personal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found out what he got cast, and it was Deadpool two. That was it. Yeah, yeah he he's, he's uh, cable. cable. Yeah, which is perfect for me. I'm I'm totally down with that. I was kind of hoping for Steve Austin, but. Steve Austin. No, Steve, Steve Austin. Lang. Steve Lane, thank you. I don't like yeah. how Steve Austin. Um, Middle, he was a little bit too old in, in retrospect, but he would have been a kick-ass. I don't think so. I think he could have totally pulled it off. Uh, that's more of my opinion, but uh, yeah. and then like, I'm not a huge Cable yeah. fan, so maybe... Yeah, I'm... no, like, I agree. Like, it still would have been awesome to see Stephen Lang play him, because he's a freaking badass. Especially okay. after uh, <laughs> Don't Breathe. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> after Don't Breathe. I don't care all that, man. That man could still, like, kill yeah. you with a toothpick. I'm looking forward to the second movie. Is, are they making a sequel? Yes. Wait, how are they gonna pull that off? Uh, he follows what's her face and sister to wherever the hell they moved. Okay. <laughs> That's my assumption. Uh, that seemed a little weird at that point in the game, but yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, then we got speaking of sequels, we got Kingsman Two, which again, yes, most unnecessary red band trailer ever, though. Oh yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I have faith in Matthew Vaughn. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a good movie because I enjoyed the first one. I like. I was thinking about it while I was watching the trailer. And I was like, I can't remember last a movie Matthew Vaughn has not made, uh, has made in the past. I want to say decade that has not had some kind of memorable action sequence in it. Yeah. Or even just like memorable line or moment. There's always some something kind of that kind of makes the characters sort of iconic. Yeah. Uh, like for example, Nicolas Cage's uh, warehouse fight scene in Kick Ass. Yep. Uh, first class. First class, uh, you know, I'm gonna count to three. And then I'm gonna use the, and I'm gonna use, what, what lift the coin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he fucking made that X-Men reboot. Um, uh, the first Gainsman, obviously the church scene. Oh, God. <laughs> Him killing everyone to Freebird is just, oh, that was amazing. Matthew Vaughn knows how to do hyperkinetic action in a way that I've never seen any director really replicate. Yeah. 
Uh, so that makes me very excited. Like, the closest I would say is, like, maybe Guy Ritchie. Uh, but not nearly yeah. as well. Not nearly as well. Um, yeah, let me got Pirates 5. I just want the movie to come out so I can stop seeing the fucking trailer. Yeah. I'm so sick of this. I, I just want to be done, man. I'm so done with this Pirates franchise. I heard it's not as bad as 3 and 4. We'll see. But, uh, like, at least we have Javier Bardem, but... Yeah, like, what was, like, I think the Kotaku re re headline I saw was, like, this this Pirates movie reminds you everything you loved and hated about the Pirates movies. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, we'll see. Then, Transformers 5. This is no one Another man, case of just get the damn movie out. Uh, yeah. I don't know, it looks so weird, man. Yep. Transformer Knights in Shining Armor. Robot Dementia. <laughs> Have you seen that clip? No. I don't want to. I don't care. It's where Anthony Hopkins likes Mark Wahlberg in the eye and calls him dude. What happened to you, Anthony Hopkins? He used to be Hannibal Lecter. To be fair, at least he came back with Westworld. Yeah. God, I still need to watch more of that show, too. I gotta catch up, too. Uh, let's okay, we got like two years to catch up on that one. Uh, then we got The Mummy, which the more I see from this movie, the more excited I am yeah. for it. I know I'm like the yeah. only one. <laughs> I'm sure, it, no, it definitely has a good chance to be good considering the people, because Christian because I think it was Christian McQuarrie's the one directing it. Well, it's right? like, here's the thing, if it's good, great. If it's bad, better. <laughs> I remember I got you excited when I told you about the new casting, too. Yeah, so you told, well, who's it again? It was Josh Brolin. No, it was no, like Javier that, Bardem as Frankenstein, which monster. Like, yes! And Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. Which is like, yeah, that's like, creepy pervy enough for Johnny Depp. I can see him pulling that off. Yeah. Uh, but it was, I think it was Javier Bardem was like, yes! Yeah. I just want James McAvoy so badly to come back as Dr. Frankenstein. It's not gonna happen, but god damn it, I love that movie. I, <laughs> it's on HBO Go, so I watched it again recently and it's just as amazing. <laughs> Still love that movie. Uh, but anyway, like I saw like the most recent trailer, and that one has Russell Crowe uh, full out going on Hyde yeah. at one point. It's like, oh god, they gave him beer. <laughs> 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 making movie, making songs, and fighting around the, the world. world. <laughs> Oi, do you have some friend Tugger? <laughs> 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 Um, but that, I saw that, and then Tom Cruise has mummy fighting powers by the end of the trailer. It's like, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, I saw who his character was. It was like, I wonder if he's like an actual character within the series. I don't know. I know they call it the dark universe now. Yeah. What well, was uh, some joke I saw earlier? Was a guy I was like, all right, here's how we're going to make the movie instantly better. We have Tom Cruise and that girl ho hovering over the tomb. They open it up. Brandon Fraser pops up and shoots Tom Cruise in the head. <laughs> Girl's confused as hell. And Brandon Fraser explains basically by recapping the entire first Mummy movie. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, but why are we in a coffin? It's like, the third. I don't know. <laughs> the third Mummy movie. Oh. <laughs> Killed my career. Huh. I saw that piece of shit in theaters. My parents dragged me to it. <laughs> I didn't see it at all. Even as a kid, my thought was, when did that kid go from British to American? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, the kid in the second, in the sec, like the kid that Rachel Wise and Brandon oh, Fraser yeah. have in the second movie, he goes randomly from a blonde British kid in the second one to a redhead American in the third one. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> well, that was one of many questions I had. <laughs> I think it was around the time I started really starting to think critically about movies. I'm trying to think of when I like what were some movies that, like, even as a kid, I realized were stupid as hell. Freddy vs. Jason was my first one. That was yeah. the first movie that actively pissed me off. Because, <laughs> like, I, I remember, like, I saw it as a kid. I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but I saw it, watch it as a kid, and I got past some of the gory bits. I think I was like, when did that movie come out? 2003, I think. Yeah, so I was like, oh fuck, that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I must have been like in my early teens at that point. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Wait, watching. Was it 2003, 2005. Either way, I'm around 15, 13 to 15, give or take. Yeah. Uh, and I remember thinking like, I remember I got so pissed off. I was like, there was no, there was no need for the like unnecessary sex scene that served no purpose. Why was the nose fall off? That was really dumb and gross and needlessly gory. Why? And I'm ranting about this in the bathroom <laughs> to myself. I think it's why I knew I was born to do this. Um, 
but yeah, anyway, that's a tangent. <laughs> uh, the other trades are ones we've gotten before. It's like Spider-Man and Dunkirk, so we could probably just skip those. Yep. Um, yeah. You got any final thoughts or you want to share your own personal when I knew I liked a critique movie story? I really can't remember. Um, all I know is that this movie, like I said, is just kind of meh. So just, it's just... It's, it's like one of those things, if you like this movie, I want to know, I'd be curious to find out why. Like, yeah. I, honestly, I am. Because I'm kind of like, what are you seeing here that I'm not? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, um, this movie is just... Like, it's not scary. It's not really that visceral. It's just not like, very save interesting. For, yeah, the characters, yeah, the characters are all pretty bland, save for, yeah, Tennessee, I think. Yeah, yeah. The captain... Had kind of a sec, you know, was had some things. I was kind of interesting seeing like a man just like so blind in faith and like so many different guards that just kind of made him an idiot. But they never really did anything with that. They yeah. just say, "Oh, you're a man of faith," and then they very rarely ever bring up his faith, except yeah. for just throw away the like, "Oh, ye of little faith." It's like, yeah, get remember because that's the faith guy. Well, I saw in his personality too. The guy's like he almost kind of like blindly jumped into things, hoping for the best. Like, there's so many instances of that. Which I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I really interpret it so much as a religious thing, though. But yeah. That's just more my personal thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just... It is what it is, I guess. Yeah. It's probably going to be better than the other movie I got to see this week. Which one? The Wimpy Kid. Good luck with that. I'll just call him Matt. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. <laughs> Cause like I did that to him on Sunday too, where it's like I told I told my head to like look, I'm probably gonna call you for snatched. So that morning when it was like all right, no one's from the Facebook message. Hey Matt, are you free this afternoon? Mm -hmm. And he just goes, what time? <laughs> <laughs> That's at least the tone I interpreted over the phone over the text message, but. Uh, yeah, so we'll come back with Diary of a Wimpy Kid later this week. And if we have time, we also got that dumb romantic yeah. drama. Which I got free tickets for, but I was like, you know what, screw it. I don't want to waste time on this. Yeah, I was wondering why I never got a text message to you about yeah. that. I think I got busy that... Oh, no, I remember what happened. There was... Something was going on that day. Oh, it okay. It was... You don't yeah. need to share if you don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> it was... It was. There were some personal things going, going Fair on. Fair enough. I respect that. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't exactly complaining because I was really fucking tired by that day. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go. I just want to go home and just lay down and fucking sleep. Yeah. God damn, I miss sleep. Anyway, so I think it's all we got. So thank you guys for watching. See you later. See you.